So the next presentation is called Combining Collaborative and Content Filtering in a Recommendation System for a Web-Based DAW by Jason Smith, who we have here, um, Michael Jacob uh, and Jason Freeman, for, all from Georgia Institute of Technology, uh, Brian Magerko as well, and then Tom McLean from the Findings Group. Go ahead, thanks. Good, thank you. Um, hello. Um, all right, hello. Yes, my name is Jason Smith, presenting this paper. And um, so, as a quick overview, I'm going to be talking about EarSketch, Georgia Tech's program for it's a web based uh, programming tool as well as a combination of an interactive uh, design uh, programming workshop as well as uh, a DAW. Uh, I'll be talking about a recommendation system we designed for users for your sketch to present uh, sound information to them, as well as how we process the information and generate recommendation scores for the samples that a user can use in production for a web-based DAW, uh, redesigning the your sketch website to accommodate for these recommendations, and then overview two evaluations we did and experiments on user preferences and user interactions with this recommendation system. So your sketch itself is uh, an online interaction programming environment. Uh, students either write JavaScript or Python code that we uh, include a curriculum on how to do, on how to write, and they write this code to produce music that then they can hear in real time in the digital audio workstation portion of the website. So it's been used in classrooms in the States and contains multiple full curriculums for lesson plans on how to do general coding practice, as well as uh, musical development, teaching information such as song structure, transitions, etc. cetera. Uh, it contains a large sound library uh, from a variety of Atlanta artists in wide genres designed to enforce creativity and authenticity to improve students' opinions of how their learning is going on how and how they feel as a creative and programming uh, agent. So um, an overarching problem, problem in the past with users for EarSketch is that most of their sound usage has been relegated to a very small amount of the samples, uh, primarily the smallest portion of the samples that are used in many of the tutorial examples, as well as simple things like uh, small hits or drum samples. Uh, less than 5% of the samples are used in more than a fifth of the scripts. And many samples experience a very small amount. We conducted a study uh, last year uh, interviewing users, and most of them reported in a general sense that they wanted to have an easier way of navigating the sounds instead of lists and searching through a large uh, dictionary of sounds. and wanted to be introduced to sounds in a way that was more organic and some system that automatically grouped the sounds beyond the generic genre labels and artist labels. So some previous work into listening for sounds. Most recommendation music systems on, in an online context are based in music listening, so systems that analyze user profiles like social media and present full songs for users as opposed to short audio loops. Um, this example, Group Explorer, uh, is one such group that uses for actual compositions, where they check information, rhythmic information from dr short drum loops in order to present and group uh, genre labels. This is an image. This image shows that uh, they were using palettes, which is small rhythmic uh, compartments of information, in order to map these genres, and they show the labels for how they correspond. So the goals of our recommendation system in EarSketch was to address this usage problem, to introduce more options for users, to organically add a wider variety of sounds into it, uh, improve an overall sense of diversity and coverage in the sounds used by users in their compositions, so wider cross-genre labels, wider uh, 
wider permutations of the sound library and the average user script and more variety between users themselves. And also to enforce your sketch's general intentions of improving students' perceptions of authenticity and creativity in an organic digital audio workstation type environment. So the, um, the, so the recommendation system itself functions by using each sample and ear sketch as an input. For every sample that a user is currently using in ear sketch, it indexes their script and generates a similarity list. That is, it generates a recommendation score that will go into that um, uses both acoustic similarity to other ear sketch samples and co-usage, or a measure of how often each sample has been used in a previous ear sketch script with other samples, to generate a large list comparing the user's input samples to basically every other script in ear sketch to generate a larger recommendation score. Then, in real time, the list of every sample combination which has been uploaded to our ear sketch server for easy distribution, each sample is simply looked up in that table and their recommendation scores are combined for the multiple inputs to generate a final output list of recommendations, uh, allowing for different recommendations uh, sent continuously while a user is interacting with EarSketch and programming something new. So um, the reason that we avoid using any user information is to conform with EarSketch's privacy policy. We don't want anything that we don't want to know anything about the user besides what they've already done in ear sketch. So they're combinations of scripts. Users don't even need to make an account for the system to work either. So the collaborative filtering element of a recommendation system, it uses the sounds in the current script as input and collects no user information, so it's just the previous samples. And we create a large list of samples based on previous uploaded ear sketch scripts to say how many combinations of things have been used before. And we plan on improving the system by refeeding it with the recommend, with scripts that have been created by users with the improved coverage that comes from generating the recommendations. So the system we run offline, so the computation isn't really an issue. And then we regularly will update this recommendation system, the larger list that gets uploaded to index sounds uh, with the new combination of sounds. Uh, when we developed this program, we used a sample set of 20,000 user scripts, both from tutorials, not with a variety of user experience with their sketch. And so now we plan on using it with uh, a general selection of user scripts from all levels of users. Um, the content filtering uses short time Fourier transform and MSDC coefficients in order to calculate the spectral density of sounds over time. And we've used this in akin to infinite drum machine with this uh, genre labeling and the genre represented by each color in your sketch. And we also use uh, MSDC coefficients to calculate power spectral sounds. This is for a sort of, this is for a, a longer term and a shorter term grouping of sounds. And we combine these features with, uh, in real time, we, in order to make this program run real time on EarSketch's servers, as well as the client, which is usually a public school computer in Atlanta, is um, we limit it to mostly a few recommendations, and we only spit out, we only have the system upload frequently with uh, 10, values for this co-usage information to analyze the previous usage of the script and then it updates in real time. So the combined recommendation scores itself that are the final representation of what to recommend based on each individual ear sketch sample is as follows. So for each sample, we use the similarity between uh, this between the input sample and what we use our co-usage information to find as the highest commonly used samples. So a sample commonly used to another, we try to find similar samples to what has been used most in the past. Then we also compare these highly co-used samples, what's similar, 
the final output of the recommendation to generate the score, we use the direct co-usage and the direct feature distance between this new recommendation as well as the original input. And that is summed together in a recommendation score of our three categories. And the direct feature distances can either be maximized or minimized to create different types of recommendations. Meaning if we intentionally provide a recommendation with high co-usage and a high acoustic similarity, we label it as uh, others like you use these sounds. For lowest co-usage and high similarity, we'd say sounds that fit your script. For highest co-usage with low similarity, we'd say discover different kinds of sounds. And with lowest co-usage and lowest similarity, we say are you feeling lucky? And we use these genre label, we use these recommendation labels to inform the user of what kind of uh, information has been used to create these scores. We also present this logic to the user when they click on the type of recommendation as an explanation. Um, so this is done for every sample that the users currently typed into their script, every sample that has been included in their code that they've written parameters that will be in the final song. And then these scores are added together for the final recommendation, and they're scaled by a factor of the square root of n, which is in order to provide somewhere between a balance of multiplying the number of times samples have been used together. So if a user is using two input samples for the recommendation engine, and the same sample shows highly co, co shows having been highly co-used with both of these, then it provides some benefit to that as opposed to just averaging out. But it's not so skewed in that the system relies completely on the co-usage factor. When we were testing the system, we found that not scaling by this factor would cause most sample recommendations to be entirely in the domain of how many samples have the same basic recommendation co-usage information as possible. And it was feeding into the original problem of users having been mostly primarily relying on the same recommendation combinations in the past. To accommodate for the new sound browser, for the new recommendation systems, our sound browser has been updated with uh, these sound folders that instead of a static list of uh, showing these 10 sounds per page and it's a total of uh, 350 pages, now it's uh, a, a sliding window where you just open and close the folders. And this allowed us to create these recommendation folders which are highlighted, representing the kind of recommendation they are. And these sounds within this folder are refreshed and updated while the user types or pastes new information into the script. Um, uh, instead of a constant loop, it only updates when new information is presented. So based on keystrokes, uh, recognizing that the user saved the script, or switching tabs, and um, to save system latency. And it uses whatever script names it finds in the active user script. Uh, if there are none, then it avoids the cold start problem by using previous skips, previous scripts either by that user or if they're not logged in, then uh, just analyzing a basic template of random scripts taken from other ear sketches. Um, so we first evaluated this subject, we, we first evaluated this, sub, uh, this recommendation system with a general subject pool of online users from Amazon Mechanical Turk. They had a, a wide range of musical experience based between either regularly working with production software or barely, you know, some never, li rarely listening to music. Uh, and this was a study designed to find general preferences of people completing a task using these recommendation systems. They were given a, a random ordering of these systems and asked to use the recommendations provided for a partial composition. So we would write a sample ear sketch script and play them the music output from that script and ask them to complete it with one suggestion from each of the four recommendation types. And the users were found to have had a statistical difference, significant difference between B and C, which were the two types with either high co-usage and low similarity or, low simil or lower co-usage and high similarity, uh, preferring those largely above the uh, D, which was are you feeling lucky, and even more so than A, the 
high co-usage, high similarity, generally predictable type recommendations. The other study we performed was on EarSketch users itself. We integrated this recommendation system into the actual interface of EarSketch and then tracked user accounts, uh, we tracked user script submissions and saw whether they preview, pasted, and actually used these recommendations. We found uh, significant higher usage from the discovery different kinds of sounds information than all of the others. Uh, users were randomly assigned to a single recommendation type, and we could only log under the assumption, because we weren't collecting specific accounts, if users were previewing the sounds before pasting them. So we said, if they previewed the sound and then pasted it, then that was the highest measure of well, they checked the recommendations and they found the one that they preferred the most. Um, the general observations we could make from this were that the difference in the tasks where your sketch users largely preferred discover different, whereas general, general users preferred discover difference or uh, others like you use these or sounds that may fit your script being the least popular is that we labeled and presented them in a way saying that uh, since EarSketch users are, have been reported to, uh, in our previous work, seeing this uh, perceptions of authenticity, we think that the suggested novelty of discovered difference may have led them to that. But the important takeaway is that the task being different between general creative use versus fixing uh, a partially completed composition means that uh, the users were drawn to different tasks. and. We think the general applicability of this is that online audio tools using recommendation systems need to have these very tailored to what the user exactly is going to be doing with this system. So something being freely creative needs to have a wider lens. So uh, these recommendations, presenting them in the sense of it's, well, here is a creative tool to augment what you're already doing, whereas something more specific like completing the task recommendations have more room for being specifically tailored to experience. And uh, since our system is recommendations being used as a creative element and something already being completed, we can build our system to figure out what the user is doing and gather, gathering a user intent for how to complete a project using this recommendation system is important for actually creating the experience. Uh, and in future work, we're going to be specifically comparing each of these recommendation styles against each other in terms of basic recommendation system evaluation types, uh, actually measuring the representation of user scripts to see if our, the long-term effects of improvement on our system, using user interaction with non-recommendation scripts to compare to see if users are now using the recommendations significantly more or less over time, and uh, using all of these new groups of information to receive the model and improve the recommendation system in the years to come. All right, uh, thank you. Brilliant. So we have time for some questions, two questions maybe? Thanks. Impressive. Uh, there is a commercial product just got recently released. It's called uh, XLN Audio. It's a Swedish company. Uh, it's called XO. And it, they also have a similar chart, basically, of 2D space and the samples on the space. And they are showing samples in a similar way that you showed on one of the screenshots. So I wonder if there are any, if they are impressed by your research or anything like that. But it really looks super similar to that. And it costs $200. So I wonder. Well, how was it related to what you did, or was it just in the air? Um, so our pri our primary uh, influences in the developing the mapping of the script, uh, the different ear sketch sounds, is that what we were originally looking at things like Infinite Drum Machine, and uh, when we developed this uh, short time Fourier transform mappings, we were using this in uh, with the intention of grouping ear sketch samples. It's, you know, 3,500 sounds, which is a large library for including in this public tool, but also it's not 
a system that's open right now to including a user's sounds. Users are able to include their own sounds into your sketch, but currently we have no plan of interacting that with the recommendation system at all. Uh, uh, not the, so we did start this work before that tool became commercially available. But yeah, thank you. Um, do we have another question? Let me. Uh, hey, um, thank you for the talk. I think that recommendation systems are, in general, quite important, especially in the, in the context of um, music production environment. It can crucially steer the, the user's compositional, uh, you know, musical, you know, uh, thoughts. So I was thinking, it's um, your your system is based on acoustic features of sounds, mm -hmm. right? You kind of um, recommend based on their acoustic features, but I was thinking we don't perceive sounds merely by their acoustic features. So, for instance, um, there is a, there is a, a really interesting similarity between a bowing a double bass and, and kazoo, for instance, or um, I don't know, like a, like a squeaking door in terms of their, their overall energy shape. So, as a composer, this kind of similarity, for instance, influenced me highly. So, my question is, what do you think how your system influence the user's musical output? What's, your, what's the influence of this kind of recommendation system on the compositional output? So, I think, um, going back to the, so this, this all comes back to this uh, original mapping, the spatial information of the sounds. Uh, our most important idea when we were developing these recommendations originally is the first of our three recommendation categories. This was similarity to highly co used. What this means is what we first do is for whatever sample the user decides to have seeding the, the input for the recommendation system, we use the co usage information to find what has been used most commonly with this. We find, in a general sense, so let's say the user has typed in that they're using some drum loop in your sketch, and that drum loop is very often used with a specific bass sound. And so what we do then is to find similarity to high code usage, we then look up the bass sound that is very often used with drum sound and find what is close to that in the, in the loop. Then, if that loop, that, that, so that's the recommendation output. And then based on all of the things that are close to that bass sound, so one of them may be the kazoo. We present that to the user as something that has been either very often used together before or very rarely used together. So I believe uh, the assumption I'm making is that in this example, the user uses drums that has always been used with the bass and our system recommends a kazoo. It would probably be recommending the kazoo because the kazoo has been very rarely used with this drum loop, but it sounds very much like the bass. So that would be in the category of uh, discover different kinds of sounds, So, which was actually the one that the users responded most to. So our recommendation system is providing very novel recommendations in the sense that as long as it sounds close to what people have been using together before, it's sort of bridging the gap between things that are completely rarely combined, because, but the basis is that it has some similarity that people aren't exploring the combinations without the recommendation system because he, the people aren't looking through your samples saying, well, I should try out all the kazoo samples while I'm proposing this track. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I think we have to continue now. Okay. Thank you.